Welcome to uh, this week's video uh, for my artist in residence program with the Bosque Redonde Memorial in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. My name is Steve Lawrence. I am a Hopi jeweler and I'm coming to you from my studio in OK Owinge Pueblo, New Mexico. And, to, and today we're gonna finish the project we started last weekend, the Tufacast Sterling Silver Ring with the Water Wave design. So uh, today we will finish up that project and then we'll also talk a little bit about the history of silversmithing in the Southwest. But today we're going to finish our casting project, uh, the ring that we've been working on. Uh, this is a Water Wave Sterling Silver Ring and right now it's not very bright because it's just got poured. Uh, we poured this uh, with the tufa cast method that I talked about in the video last week. And today we're gonna to go ahead and finish this particular ring to get to, again, to get to the point where we have a finished sterling silver ring and it'll look like that. The finished product will look like that. So again, I am honored to be uh, selected as the artist in residence for the Bosque Redonde Memorial uh, in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. And we'll get started with finishing this ring. And you'll see the process of filing, sanding, bending, soldering, and polishing this ring to get to the final finished product of this ring. So we have our cast ring here, sterling silver. And this, this one measures about, about almost two and three quarters of an inch. So this will probably be like about a size 10 or, a, or 10 and a half or 11. So the first thing that we don't wanna do is we want to clip off all of these uh, protrusions that come out of the side of the, um, of the ring here because we want to smooth this edge out so i'm going to go ahead and take my wire cutters is what i normally use and clip all of these little protrusions off and that kind of cleans up the edge of the ring and all of these little bits of silver can be reused uh, they can be reused in other projects down the road. So so now that we've cleaned it up, I've clipped off all the edges and there's still a little bit of a rough edge up there. And this is again called the sprue. This is the silver, this is the extra silver that kind of went into the mold uh, as we poured the molten silver through the sprue. We're going to cut this piece off because this is just extra silver that we can again use in a, another project. But before we do that, I want to kind of re I want to bring out the water wave design a little bit and we're going to do that by filing uh the design on the top and it's easier for me to hold it with the sprue still on versus cutting the sprue off and then trying to file the design out. So I'll take a file, one of the jeweler's file and we'll just kind of file the top of the water wave design to bring that design out and that kind of gives it some contrast. And you can see that I'm catching all the silver dust too as well because that silver dust can be used also in other projects down the road. Or sometimes jewelers will just sell it back to the silversmithing supply company to get money so that they can buy other things. So it's called scrap silver. Okay, so with the filing, you can see that I'm starting to bring the design out of the water wave. It's getting a little bit brighter. So we will continue doing that until we have so we have the design nice and filed and sanded at the top. So now that we, so we file the top of the design, the water wave design, so it will stand out from the background. 
So you can see I've got a good filing situation going here. I file the design and it's popping, it's popping the design from the background of the ring. Then we'll take our file and again, we'll, as I mentioned, we cut off those protrusions, but we want it, it's still kind of rough on the edges. So we want to take our file, our jeweler's file and kind of file that edge down nice and smooth on both sides of the ring. And that'll clean that up and that'll make it nice and comfortable for the wearer. We'll actually turn it upside down and kind of round the back edge off a little bit with the file. We're gonna round that off. So when the, when the owner of this ring puts it on, it'll be nice and smooth on the edges. There won't be any sharp edges because you don't want to have any sharp edges on a ring. And again, on the back, you see it has my information my Hopi name, my uh, clan symbol, and my Hopi uh, tribal affiliation. We're gonna just slightly sand that too, so it'll pop out. But this will be the inside of the ring. So we're gonna sand that to pop out my name, my clan symbol, and my tribal affiliation. And you can see that it's starting to come out. There's the sun symbol, there's Hopi, there's my Hopi name with Gwaya. Now what we'll do, now that that's cleaned up somewhat, then we'll take a jeweler saw. It's a really delicate saw. And then we're gonna, now we're gonna go ahead and cut the sprue off. Now we have the, the ring, and then as I mentioned, this is extra silver, the sprue. We're just gonna go ahead and put that in our tray. We can use that for another, uh, we can use that for another uh, project later. But here we are, uh, we've got our ring filed and sanded, and the sprue is cut off. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna bend this. And I like to use, I use my ring mandrel, put it between my legs just kind of for support. And then we're gonna take our ring and start the bending process. Now this is sterling silver and sterling silver is somewhat, uh, you know, the one of the properties of metal is it's what's called malleability because it bends. But there, after working this and bending it and pounding it, it gets a little bit what, what we call work hardened and I bent it like about a, a half semicircle and it gets, it's, the metal gets kind of work hardened. So we got to do a process called annealing to soften up the metal again. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to reheat this till it gets to be about an orange glow. We don't want to heat it too, too hot. And then after that, we're going to re-bend, uh, keep continue bending this, but we're going to do an annealing process first. So we want to do a process called annealing. So as I uh, so as I mentioned, when we start the hammering and working the silver, it becomes what what we call work hardened, and it has the potential to break. So what we do is we do this process called annealing, where we uh, heat up the metal, the sterling silver again to kind of realign the molecules of the silver so it'll be more uh, malleable again, or it'll be able to bend without breaking. So this is just a, a process that we do just to ensure that we have good ductility and that we will prevent the silver from be becoming too work hardened. 
So you see, we're just gonna kind of warm it up till it's like a little bit orange. And you can see that happening now. And then we'll just let it cool down for about 10 seconds. And you can see it's turning from orange again back to a grayish color. And then we'll quench it in the acid and then we'll uh, dip it in the water. And that will, uh, then we'll begin the bending process again. We just got through done with the uh, annealing process. So it, uh, it softened up the silver uh, and we're gonna continue bending it. I'm bending it on what's called a ring, a ring mandrel. And I'm also using a, what's called a jeweler's hammer, which is made out of a rawhide. So you don't want to use a, a metal hammer on silver or your jewelry work because it'll mar up the metal. So there we have it. We bent the uh, ring into the circular pattern. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the edges with a file and then we're gonna close this completely together and then we're gonna solder the band together. Now that we've got the ring bent and we've got it kind of really close to the shape we wanna do it, I wanna kind of work on these edges right along here and make them nice and even and then we'll close it and they'll fit nice and perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just get my jeweler's uh, files. And file these edges nice and flat. And try to get an angle, you know, so they'll meet each other real nicely. So there won't be any gaps uh, when I put it together. These should be like, it real tightly together both of these ends so to make that fit nice and tight with no space between them we're just going to kind of file these ends a little bit flatter so like when they come together they'll be nice and even and flush because what we're going to do is we're going to solder this together and we're going to use like a medium solder and solder uh, will heat this up so the solder will melt and bind the two ed edges together and we don't want any gaps because the solder will not fill gaps it's just meant to join the two metals together and they should fit together evenly. So I think I'm getting it, these nice and level at the point where I can hammer it closed. So you can see that I've kind of gotten it a little nice and even. And then we'll just kind of hammer these together. To create a nice, tight seal you can see it's getting closer So that's pretty solid there together. They're nice and even. So I'm just gonna start, take that to the bench and then we're gonna solder that together. Now that we've got our ring put together, uh, hammered together real nice and tight, we're gonna solder it together. So I'm gonna dip it in some liquid flux. And then I'm gonna put a little flux paste flux on that seam there 
So what the flux does, it helps, it helps the solder flow and join our two ends of metal or two ends of metal together. So the flux helps in that regard. It helps the solder flow. So we're going to put it on our fire bricks here, nice and even. And then we're going to put a little bit of a medium solder, which is a real small, tiny piece of medium solder right on that join. Place it on there. Center it really nicely. And we're going to heat our ring up with our torch. And we want to heat it up nice and slow. And then once we hit the melting temperature of the medium solder that'll melt and as I mentioned the flux will help guide it to join the two ends the seam the seam together for the ring and then we got our we've hit our melting temperature And the solder has filled the, the join together. Of course, that's very hot. Then we're going to dip it in the acid. And then we're going to rinse it off. And then we have a nice soldered piece, nice ring. And what we'll do is uh, we'll take this and then we'll reshape it with our ring mandrel. What we'll do next is we'll apply a patina, uh, a patina to the a patina to color the metal. Give it a, a dark patina. So the silver water waves will really contrast nicely against the patina background. And so we're shaping this now, since we've soldered it, we're shaping it back into a nice round shape. Sometimes it gets stuck on there. It looks like this will be like about a size, um, about a size 10. I think that's what we said we were looking that it might become. Okay, now we've reshaped it.